That's scary. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Retna. Today we're discussing <laughs> Simon versus the Homo sapien agenda. I really like this book. This story revolves around a kid named Simon. Simon is your average hot, at least that's what I think, clumsy, intelligent, not so straight closeted high school boy and then we also have a character named blue you do not know the real identity of blue blue is simon's pen pal these two boys simon and blue they have a very close relationship through email and simon basically fall in love with blue through all they are very cute email <laughs> yeah email they're so cute and then one day Simon was blackmailed by a guy named Martin because Martin literally saw the email conversation that Simon had with Blue. How stupid is Simon reading an email in the school library and forget to log out? It's very stupid, Simon. So there you have it. A story of this book. It sounds very cliche, but it's not. It's a great book. It's a wonderful book. It's a gorgeously done book. And I really thank Becky Create such joyful reading for us. So many like nail bidding, anxiety, chitsy feeling, cringy, witty, and all those good stuff. In one page, you're like leaping with joy and you feel so heartwarming. But then pages after that suddenly you feel very sad. All the drama, teenage angst happening in the book. I didn't read it in iPad, I basically read it on my laptop. I literally bring my laptop everywhere, even during dinner. Someone was like, why are you holding a laptop? I'm reading and I'm taking notes, so spare me or whatever. Just leave me alone! I can't help myself grinning all day. Ah, oh, you're overwhelmed with me. I need a blue scarf. That's my blue scarf! Now I'm all blue! Yay! If you're looking for something very light, easy to read, enjoyable, very cute stuff, this is a very good book, okay? Trust me, people, you're going to like it. Outside, it's raining. It's raining, it's raining. So, I think I've already talked about the non spoilery stuff. If you guys want to put a spoiler comment, please put a disclaimer before you write anything in the comment box down below. So, for non spoilery people, goodbye. Goodbye! Ha! So first we met Martin and Simon where Martin literally blackmailing Simon. It is going to be a very heartbreaking story about a gay kid trying to save himself from a blackmailer but it's not. The blackmailing part only took 1% of the story. And then we also been introduced to Simon's family, Alice and Nora, which is Simon's sisters. Uh, I really like the relationship they have it is a very funny family, especially the dad and they are a very heartwarming family. We also met Simon's other friends. We have Nick, Abby and we have Leah. Where I'm going to talk about Leah after this. I really like that character. I think I can relate the most to Leah compared to any other character. So throughout this book, I literally in a finding quest to ease blue. I have many speculations. So at first, I really thought Martin will be blue and then when I read the book, I really do not want Martin as blue because I really don't like Martin. Like every time I read any scenes with Martin, I was like, Martin, stop. Go away. And then we have Prince Carl. I do not want blue to be Prince Carl. The way I imagine Carl is like very popular boy. It's not the blue that I want. I want blue like have similar hotness as Simon. Nerdy type of hot guy maybe a little bit more manly compared to Simon's. I know this is my perspective, okay? If you guys have a different kind of perspective of Blue and Simon, I am so sorry. And then we have Nick. At first, I thought it's going to be Nick. They know each other for years since they are like four years old, I think. If Nick is Blue, it's going to be very, very sweet. However, I can see Nick really, really like Abby. I'm not sure how to put Abby in my preference at first. But after some times, I quite like that girl. She's a definition of a popular girl, but not bitchy kind of popular girl. I kind of like... Yeah, come on. Don't be like this to this Abby. I know you're jealous. However, as we go through the book, we can see Leah kind of being left behind by the group of friends. If I was Leah and my best friend coming out to another person and not you, obviously you're going to be very, very sad. I understand, Leah. I was like, Simon, what? The conversation Leah and Simon have in the car 
all really really sweet and I can't help myself crying they talk about it they resolve their problem so we know that Simon met Blue through a Tumblr post quoted he talked about the ocean between people and how the whole point of everything is to find a shore worth swimming to I mean I just had to know him I think that the reason why they have a very genuine relationship is because Simon is not yet out to another person even Blue has not yet tell anyone about his sexuality these two persons felt like they understand each other I guess I didn't really think of myself as interesting until I was interested to Blue so I can't tell him i rather not to lose him this is about the blackmailing stuff the reason why Simon didn't want to tell Blue about it I feel very 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 heartwarming about this I can see clearly Simon really really care about Blue oh 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 you stuff Oreo. I will always picture Simon and Blue sweet cute conversations every time I eat Oreo after this. FYI, that's my favorite cookie. Another thing I like about this book is the representation of Tumblr. Like <laughs> Tumblr is everything and this book shows that. Becky, I love you. There's one thing that Tumblr has taught me is that a lot of guys consider it hot when a girl is a lesbian. Come on, Simon. You don't want to know what tag I track in Tumblr? Oleg, Oleg. You don't want to know. I couldn't believe how much there was to choose from. Harry Potter and Draco Malfoy hooking up in thousands of ways in every broom closet at Hogwarts. I found the one with decent grammar and stayed up reading all night. It was a weird couple of weeks. <laughs> that was the summer. I thought myself, how to do laundry. There are some socks that shouldn't be washed by your mom. Another part that I really like about this book is the representation to the theatre community. It's a little bit nostalgic for me. The feeling of being on stage and performing is really, you can't really express it in words. Whenever you're on stage, the spotlight is on you. It's the best moment of your life. You felt like everything is in your hand. You can hold the world. By the way, I want to talk about the emails. I love all their conversations. It's funny how they can be very cute and daring in their conversations. You felt like, oh my god, did he actually say that? And then another part like, oh, I'm so sweet. And then another part, oh, so cute. And I can't believe I literally shipping two characters just through their email conversations. That's something, my friend. Oh, 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 oh. oh. And the fact that Simon is a Potter hat! Uh, win. It feels like we're the last survivors of the zombie apocalypse. Wonder Woman and a gay Dementor. It doesn't bode well for the survival of the species. Can you imagine the Mentor married a Wonder Woman? <laughs> Serious stuff over here, guys. I can see that this book trying to push the stereotypes we have to it's this community. I thought that the reason why it's very hard for them to coming out because they are afraid for what they've become. Actually, it's not. Most of them accept who they are as a person. But the problem is that the people around you, especially if the people closest to you, if they already perceive you as this kind of person. However, as a human, we change and we grow to a different kind of a person. So it's very hard for you to tell I'm different this is who am I now? Simon is not representing only the LGBT community. The Simon story also represents if any teenagers out there can relate to Simon in a lot of ways. The conversation Simon have with Alice about you should coming out too as a straight person. I really like that quote because it shows that coming out is not just because you're gay, you're transgender, you're lesbian to tell people you are different. You feel uncomfortable of other people judging you or perceive you you just need to screw that because it's your life living your life as what you want and that's it being secure in your masculinity isn't the same as being straight i always knew i was a boy and i never wanted to be anything but a boy so we have the stereotypes about gay people like if you're gay you're like a woman even to me you do not act like a girl uh you dressed up like a boy most of the time. A person should be comfortable with whatever she is wearing. Don't put people down just because you do not like what he or she wears or what he or she act like. And then we have the conflict. It was a little bit predictable. I mean like, okay, this book needs a conflict. Everyone now knows that Simon is a gay kid without Simon's consent. I like how Simon handled it. Okay, now everyone knows I'm gay. 
I didn't know what to do, but first thing first, I need to come out to my parents. I was kind of shocked and sad for him, but the conversation he had with the parents during the coming out, I can't help but laughing because the dad are hilarious, although quite offensive, but still funny. <laughs> I'm sorry. I close my eyes. I'm pregnant, I say. I can't soak it, says my dad. You're glowing. <laughs> I look him in the eye. Really though. Okay. It's sweet how many people are really care about Simon. After that, Simon's realized that he was not thankful enough with all these people. So now Blue basically know who is Jock in Simon. And then when Simon told Blue that he loves Blue, something like that, and really really wants to meet Blue as a person, Blue was kind of chicken out and didn't email Simon for a long time. Blue? Why? But it's kind of sweet though. He bought the Elliot Smith t-shirt and then put it on Simon's locker. But still, that's a coward thing to do. Just be a man and then tell Simon you liked him too. Oh, and Simon's first gay bar experience. Okay, it's not a gay bar. It's literally like a gay restaurant. <laughs> Finally, blue meat. Simon. Simon was like, I'm going to the fair. I'll wait for you. Stop chicken out and meet me. Go, Simon! And then Blue didn't turn up. No, no, just no, no, please, no. When everyone's already left the fair, and then Simon left alone. And boom! Blue came! Blue is. Bram. I didn't saw that. I know a lot of people were like, I knew it's going to be Bram. I didn't see that coming until the part he finally confirmed Martin is not blue. Because I thought Martin's blue. You as president's name, Bram, because of Abraham. I kind of like Bram because I still remember the scene uh, during the English class. The teacher passed all the test results and then there's Bram blushing. And I just kind of get the hint actually. But Bram didn't play a very big role in the previous chapters. Bram is so sweet and he's a football player. Good for you Simon, good for you. And then as usual in contemporary novels, we have last chapter where we want to show the happy ending of all characters. Kaflia. Playing the drum, she looked very badass, very pretty, and Garrett have a crush on her. And then we also have Nick and Abby kind of look kitsy together. Alice and her boyfriend kind of like, okay, we're going for lunch with everybody. I'm going to give you a permission to use the house. Two hours, just the two of you, Simon and Bram. Bye bye, Alice. You're the sister of the year. Oh, oh, about Nora. She's been practicing to be a very badass guitar player. Yay, Nora, yay! So there's many good quotes in the book. My favorite will be this one. There shouldn't be a default. So it's just meant that there's no definition like this is the person everyone should be. Every single human in this world are different. You should be proud of it, embrace it, and accept who you are, don't feel afraid, don't feel down just because people talk bad about you, just because people perceive you as different doesn't mean you a bad person. There shouldn't be a default. Everyone different in their own beautiful way. So guys, that's it for the discussion of this great book called Simon versus the Homo Sapien Agenda. So I really want to hear your thoughts. I'll see you guys in my next video. Goodbye. Goodbye.